Let's talk a little bit about the younger years, those wonder years <laughs> back in the day. Growing up, I grew up in San Diego, California. You know, when the time that mattered at least from kindergarten through high school, those formative formative years. And I was born in Boston area, didn't spend much time there, and we came out to California because my father was in the Marine Corps. So that's what brought us to Orange, California. There's a There used to be an old Chinook base. For the guys that are around that time and know that area, it was in Orange County, in El Toro. There used to be an old Chinook base, and that's where my dad worked. He worked on the Chinooks. So I lived on a Marine base kind of growing up when I was really young. And then he got out, and... We started our normal civilian life, moved down to San Diego, Sarah Mesa area, right in the middle of San Diego. And it was great. I think I grew up in a great childhood. Now, my family had problems like a lot do. We had, you know, my, my father and he'll be the first to admit it had some drugs and alcohol problem, you know, and my, there was some, some kind of some explosive things that happened in, you know, in my parents' marriage and it was tumultuous and I grew up with a lot of fear and tension, you know, that, and I think that probably affects me to this day. I, I still don't like when people yell and shit around me. It makes me very uncomfortable. And, but there was a lot of love. I felt loved. I, I never felt unloved from my parents, which I'm very grateful for. They were supportive, you know, even if my parents were going to separation or, you know, my dad was gone for some time and then back in the house and then. They were always there to support and sports were not even have to be pushed because I was all about it. They were supported. You know, I played sports year round. I have a little sister also and we played sports all year round. I played soccer. I played football for some of the rest of the world. I played I swam. I played American football. I played baseball. Every All those things growing up. We're great. We played outside. This wasn't the time where we had cell phones and iPads and stuff. You know, I'm 38 years old. So this was the night. This was the nineties, the early nineties, and then going all through the nineties. So it was a good time to grow up. We played, we're riding bikes outside and San Diego was great. Roller hockey. We were crushing mighty ducks and then going out and playing roller hockey in the street. It was a healthy way to grow up. We had canyons in San Diego. So yeah, we were in a city but we could go down to canyons and play war and all that shit. And it was during this formative time. I remember exactly when it was. I was seven years old. It was 1992. It was October. And I was standing on a hill with my dad. And I saw glow lights floating in San Diego Bay. I asked him what it was. He said, those are Navy SEALs training in the Bay. And my hair blew back. I was like, what? From that moment on, that special force, special operator seed was planted in my heart. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I found out you could be a commando. That was a real job. Yeah, let's do that. I crushed, I was in Blockbuster <laughs> getting those VHS tapes and, you know, men with green faces. Any documentary I could get on, you know, Vietnam seals were fascinating. Green Berets, all that whole world was spoke to my soul on a very deep level. And I think a lot of special operators, guys, and even guys in the military, something speaks to you. You want to go into that. And for me, it was a very deep calling. Now, that focus on that, on what I wanted to do didn't last, all right? Because, you know, you start getting a little older. My parents separated for, for real. And my mom was a teacher. You know, we were from humble roots. And so there was financial troubles. And we moved in, my mom and my sister and I moved in with my grandparents in an area of San Diego called Poway. And that was a good move. It's a little bit more affluent area, better schools, better sports. The chicks were hotter, so I liked it. And I moved there in high school and that's where I went to high school. I went to Poway High. And that was a great move because it was Structured better for sports, structured better for school. It was just all around a better situation. It was uh, a good move that I'm very grateful for. And 
while there. And with the, for a lot of guys, that's when those bad habits started. That's when the drinking started. That's when those, those negative things that take you off track come, they were right in my face. So that special force, special operator, that Navy SEAL goal I had, it kind of got shelved and clouded. And that's the truth. I went to a school that you just went to college. That was the, that's what the deal was. So even through all this stuff and I get fucking kicked out of high school, mind you. So I played lacrosse and football in high school. I was decent and I had some, some looks, some scholarship opportunities that all went poof the minute I got kicked out of high school. It was right after senior year of football and I had, uh, I had some fights, kind of brought some heat on me. And then I had possession of marijuana in my car. They brought drug dogs. I had some marijuana in my car. There you go. So I graduated from Rancho Bernardo High School, but I couldn't play lacrosse senior year. So all those lacrosse looks went away. Nobody wants to deal with people, you know, as we talked about, that's already dealing with legal troubles. And that was me. And so all of that, all of that focus, it all was kind of just all over the place. I didn't know. I had no clarity on what the fuck I was doing. I was just kind of living at that 17-year-old, dumb as fuck, uh, thinking I know everything and I knew nothing. And I was grateful for my formative years, how I grew up. It was exercise was pushed. It was comp be confident. It was speak clearly. It was you're okay by yourself. It was make your own sandwich. It was, you know, it was my, my mom's very nurturing and is unbelievable, but we were taught to be self-reliant and strong and to, to be able to survive on our own. And I'm very grateful for growing up that way. And also pushed with an adventurous spirit. You know, my mom liked to travel. We got to see cool places. My grandmother liked to travel. I have a tattoo of my grandmother here. And that was cool. I got to see cool places. I got to see Hawaii growing up as a young kid. And I, that opened my world of what was possible and ways to live. I love island life. Love Hawaii. And shout out to fucking the 808. And I was, feel very fortunate overall. You know, people had, you know, we had some, some difficult times and, but every family does. It's how you view it. It's the, the story you tell yourself about how you grew up. None of that matters anymore. None of it. If you had a really bad go or you had a really great go, how many people do we know, a lot of us know, who had great childhoods and turned out Terrible. It's because they never got tested. They never had any hardship growing up. So they have no level to appreciate things from. They have nothing to measure from. I feel, ve I feel very sad for those people. They had it too easy and comfort kills. Comfort absolutely kills. So if you're raising some kids, make them tough. Put them outside. Don't give them a tablet. Don't get them soft. You see what's happening in this world today. Things are getting way too soft. People are worried about their feelings every all over the place. And it's because we're going too soft on our young ones. Put them outside. Let them fall down. Let them bleed. Let them experience some stuff. And put them in sports and get them off the screens, right? At least growing up. We need the screens right here to put out some good information. But you get what I'm saying. That adventurous spirit definitely propelled me. That adventurous seed that got planted was, was very cool. And also, have a sense of humor with your kids. Mess with your kids. I'm really grateful that my mom and dad both have a very good sense of humor. And we can joke. And you can joke about stuff and not be sensitive. And you can call each other out. And you can get real. I think most people on this channel are pretty, pretty cool. We got some... Some, some questionable ones that come in and come, come sideways in the comments, but what are you going to do? You know, that's what's wrong with society. So negativity getting sh thrown shade, 
you gotta examine yourself, right? You gotta examine why you're throwing negativity is because you harbor negativity in your heart. That's the truth. We project, we reflect what we project. And a lot of that comes from how we were raised. Were you raised that way? Were you taught that when you feel some negativity that you can just throw that out into everybody? Or were you told to fucking sack up? And it's, it's, it's not all about you. It's not about your feelings. Fucking, you're all right. And I grew up like that, and I'm really glad I did. I'm really grateful for my mom and my dad, who are both still alive, and I very feel very fortunate for that. If your parents are still alive, tell them you love them. If you have had some, some bad falling outs, and I had, me and my father, we had fallouts and this and that. And, but you know what? All that, push that aside. Life's too short, man. We're here for a very short amount of time. Man, put that shit away. Say you're sorry. Be the bigger person. Even if you think you're in the right, who cares? Man, let's live in, it's better to live in peace than to live being the most right. So walk that high road, man. Bring people together if it's possible. And let's, we can heal ourselves from the inside out. It starts with ourselves. That's what I push here is the discipline. And that's what I push with guys who are on my program. Shoot me an email if you're interested. But I push daily disciplines. Daily disciplines with your wake up. Daily disciplines with your morning process, not morning routine. Daily disciplines with your macros, with your nutrition, with your training, with your active thought process. All of these are disciplines which are important as adults that we don't really get taught when we're younger. Teach these kids, teach your kids stricter discipline growing up. The only benefit, I would have been better, you know, I would have gotten a lot less trouble probably if I was just taught more discipline or I learned to institute it on myself. I don't put it on my parents. I, I was just not dis. I didn't have the information and not say that I would apply it, right? I was an idiot, but at least give it to them. It's important, but we got to first learn it ourselves and apply it ourselves. You know, we don't have a learning issue. We have an application issue. The education and the information is everywhere. People just don't apply it. So we heal self. Then we heal out. And that goes into our families. Bring your families back together. But you have to be good. You have to be the solid rock to be able to do that. Can't pull, you can't help anybody if you can't first help yourself. Once again, that takes self-awareness. Where are you at? If you, you can't learn what you think you already know. So if you think you're already good, well, then you can't be helped. But if you're not perfect in your day, not living that perfect day, and you're not perfectly aligned with that divine design, then you need to fix yourself. Fix yourself, get honest, and then fix your families. Then ideally fix your communities, and that's how we roll. We push out. We make this ripple a fucking tsunami. That's how it goes. Be smart out here.